Hi, I'm Nicholas Halper, also known as Dr. Nick at Chia, and I'm going to give you a brief tour of the new proof of space design proposed in the latest chip. I'll focus on the main architectural and security design choices, walking through how a plot is built, how it responds to challenges, and how it defends against key attacks. If you're unfamiliar with why a new proof of space is needed, I recommend reading the motivation section of the chip first. Here's an overview of the components. Don't worry about the small details yet, we'll build up to it in about this rough order. Let's start with the proof construction and how this affects plotting. So plotting starts at the x values from 0 to 2 to the k, and T1 finds pairings using a new matching algorithm. This lets us tune plotting difficulties separately from verification costs, so validation remains fast, but we get security tunability. We enforce a difficulty wall between T2 and T3, which serves as a grinding barrier. This is critical for preventing rental attacks. Our initial target is to defend against 5 million H100s, which means plotting is intentionally slow. A 3060 GPU will max out at around about 40 terabytes per day. CPUs alone will be much slower, but potentially doable for small farms. Once we reach T3, we transform paired X values into proof fragments. Proof fragments are bit dropped and encrypted partial proofs. T1 started with all the seed values for each X value and created pairs. We take all the T1 X values that are part of the T3 parent and drop specific bits to reduce the data stored. We then encrypt these bits through a FISA cipher to form the proof fragment. So at this point, we have proof fragments in T3. And T1 and T2 are discarded since now they act as a cost to secure the path to T3. We continue matching pairs to create tables T4 and T5. The T4 and T5 tables are compressed using Banesh networks. But since Banesh networks are really resource intensive, uh, we use partition construction to make it viable even on hard drives and low-end systems. So here's a visual of the plot structure. The blue lines show left side matches and the orange lines show right side matches. Between T3 and T4, data is intentionally mixed for structural security. We also use bipartite pairing, which lets us optimize compression by saving a bit on the ordering of matches. During proving, we load a full Banesh partition into memory. This converts random hard drive seeks into large, fast sequential reads, which makes the format hard drive friendly without compromising on compression or performance. Currently, these are the expected plot sizes. Plots are smaller, down to 1.6 gigabytes for a K28, meaning a 20 terabyte drive might hold over 10,000 plots. So improved plot management tools will help. Now that we have a plot built, let's look at how we respond to challenges to prove we have the space. When a challenge comes in, we first apply the plot ID filter to select eligible plots. Next, we use the proof fragment scan filter to occasionally pass a proof fragment within a specific challenge defined range. The scan incurs just one disk seek, and like the plot ID filter, it helps to minimize further disk accesses in the next step of the proving process. A pass proof fragment contains embedded bits that indicate which other partition it links to. Let's take a quick look at the data structures between these two partitions. All left and right pointers from T5 to T4 are contained within the same partition. Some right pointers cross over from T3 in one partition to T4 in the other. From the proof fragment, we trace upward to its parent in T5 and then down to sibling nodes in partition B. Between these two partitions, we always form a group of three linked proof fragments. This group is called a quality link. Between any two linked partitions, we collect all quality links. So partition A and partition B contribute their own sets of quality links, and many of them cross into each other. The full combined set of quality links becomes the building blocks for the next phase. We select the partition sizes large enough that reconstructing the X values in a quality link set requires more effort than building the plot from scratch. This creates what we call bit drop saturation a state where attackers can't drop additional bits without paying a higher cost than just replotting. So this effectively pushes attacks back to grinding, which is something we can directly defend against using the plot difficulty barrier. From the quality link set, we begin building a quality chain, starting with the link form from the first proof fragment that passed the scan filter. We then extend the chain by linking up to 16 quality links, each of which must pass an additional hash check with the challenge. Only after the full chain is formed do we check it against the block or pool partial difficulty. This defers the expensive proof reconstruction only until when it's needed, so that keeps energy use low and performance efficient for farmers. 
Attackers try to drop even one bit per quality link, face an exponential explosion in false positives. For instance, one bit drop compounded over 16 links yields over 3 billion hashes, already near the cost of a full plot grind. At two bits dropped, the number of required hashes jumps into the trillions, making this attack entirely impractical. To recap, T1, T2, and the plot difficulty defend against grinding. We store only partial data for proofs and proof fragments, which in turn enable bit drop saturation on a sufficiently large set of quality links. And a chaining filter in constructing the quality chain blocks attacker shortcuts to pass the block difficulty test. Now let's take a look at how an honest farmer turns a quality chain into a full proof. Each chain contains proof fragments of dropped bits, which must be recomputed into full X values for the network to verify them. So once one or more chains are built, they're hashed with the challenge and tested against a block or pool difficulty. If a chain passes, it's a winning proof. But each quality link includes only three of the four required fragments, so the proof still isn't quite complete. When a chain passes, the harvester fetches the missing fourth proof fragments from disk. These complete the input needed to reconstruct the full proof. The fragments are decrypted and expanded into bit drop X value ranges. The solver then runs a specialized reconstruction algorithm to recover the complete X values needed to finalize the proof. Since the candidate set is already narrowed, reconstruction has an exponential drop off and the solver only needs to check a small number of matches in T2. As a result, the original plot difficulty has little impact on solve time and solver can quickly return the full X values for verification. The matching algorithm is also asymmetrical. As you can see in the chart, the first proof fragments are the most expensive to compute, but each additional proof fragment costs significantly less. Since a full proof contains 64 fragments, this is pretty crucial for keeping solving fast and efficient, especially for low-end hardware. We've published reference code so that you can test solver performance on your own system. Other results are pretty strong. Even a Raspberry Pi 5 can solve a K28 proof in under 7 seconds. Since farmers have 20 to 30 seconds to submit a winning proof, CPU and systems can still handle K32s, although staying under 5 seconds is recommended for more reliable performance. That about wraps up the tour. The new proof of space uses tunable plot difficulty, compressed proof fragments, and chain-based validation to defend against grinding and compression attacks. Farmers only solve proofs when necessary, keeping energy use low, and can even run on budget hardware. If you're curious to learn more, you'll find more detail in the chip and the reference code. I hope you'll take a closer look, and I look forward to your feedback and discussion.